Hey, Matt here. I'm sure many of you have already heard the news of GTO Wizard partnering with Ruse to create GTO Wizard AI. I've been excited about this for a while. I first learned about Ruse over a year ago from a friend from Quebec, and I've probably been using it as my main solver for at least the last six months. I think it solves a lot of the issues that people have with GTO Wizard, such as it didn't have the sizings they used. Maybe they used different ranges or they couldn't node lock, whatever it was. For what it's worth, I think that's more of the limitations of pre-solve solutions and not GTO Wizard themselves, but now they've solved that problem. I know I'm biased, but I'm happy GTO Wizard was the ones who partnered with Ruth since they've been really good to me. And I think the reason why they're number one in the industry is obviously the quality of their product, but mostly their speed of their innovation. I think in the last year, GTO Wizard has had more updates than all the other companies and software have had combined. I hope they keep that up with Wizard AI as well. I just wanted to make this video to show you how and why I think the best way to use this tool is. First, I wanna show you a couple experiments that I read. I was curious to see how much EV does not using multiple sizes or a certain simplification actually cost you in terms of big blinds per hundred. A lot of people express that stat in percentage of the pot loss. Like they'll say, oh, you know, if you range bet here, you lose 1% of the pot. But how much does that actually mean in terms of big blinds per hundred, especially when most of the hands actually are just folded preflop. So these are all heads up examples since I knew it would be more extreme than in six max. Using HRC, I was able to get the frequency of each scenario. So you see here, this is the frequency of a single race pot, a three bet pot and a four bet pot. The rest would be preflop. Then I use the EVs in the pile aggregator reports to see how much you could potentially be losing taking different strategies. Quick disclaimer, the solver is exploiting the fact that you're using a simplified strategy. Therefore, in practice, you're likely gonna lose even less than this. And also this is just from an equilibrium point of view. It doesn't take into account potential uh, exploits, whether that be that you're actively trying to exploit somebody or just passively exploiting. The first table, I have one size versus all sizes. So what this means is one player in a sim is using fixed one size. I think in this example, I used 50 only on the flop, 75 only on the turn, 75 only on the river, and all sizes being pretty much every size you could potentially see in game. So that's like 10%, 25, 33, 55, 66, 75. You get the idea. And what we found here is that the simple player will lose 3.93 big blinds per hundred. Is that a lot? Is that a little? I'll leave that up for you to decide. The second table, I have essentially the same experiment, except instead of using every single size in between zero to 100, I'm pretty sure I only used uh, 30, 50, 70, 100, 150, 200. So I called this realistic multi-size uh, since most people are not gonna be using all those sizes. And you can see that now the one size player only loses 3.46 big blinds per 100. Now the third test, I used a small, medium, and big size for the quote unquote simple player uh, versus all sizes like the, the first test that we did. And this was actually pretty interesting to me. It only lost 0.57 big blinds per hundred. That's actually pretty good in my opinion. And was kind of eye-opening as well that you can capture a lot of the EV just by using a small, medium, or big size. Now, again, this is using all of all three potentially on a street. It's not like the AI solver picking one dynamic size, which we'll talk about later. But in my opinion, this, this is pretty good. And it's potentially an easy way for you to get close to Nash without doing something crazy complicated. The fourth example is one more size each street. Basically what that means is one player will always have the option of using one extra size than the, than the other player. And you can see that if that's the case, the person with the extra size will always win. The last example I have here is a lot of people say that river is the street where you get the most benefit of using multiple sizes. Again, we have our first test up here with the one size fixed versus all sizes, but I changed the river slightly where I gave it a small, medium, and big size. And you can see that you actually gain about 30% uh, of the EV back by doing that. If there's one street that you want to first look at adding multiple sizes. I think based on this test shows that, yeah, river, river could be a good spot to start. For me, the main takeaways I have from this is number one, multiple sizes doesn't actually cost you that much EV in terms of big blinds per hundred, at least in my opinion, from a theory point of view. In practice, maybe it could be worth more or less based on exploits, but that's a whole different conversation. Number two, an easy way to capture most of the EV is just allow for a small, medium, and big size on each street. Number three, so long as you have one more sizing option than villain, you're likely to win. Actually, you're guaranteed to win based on this test. And number four, river sizings are gonna be worth about 35% of your total EV loss. Now what's really cool about GTO Wizard AI is they have this feature called dynamic sizing. And essentially what it is, is it will actually tell you what the highest EV bet size is 
at each decision point. You can pick between the default, I think it's somewhere between six to eight sizings that it has, or you can even specify the sizings that you wanna use. I'll link this article in the description below, but as you can see, it captures uh, greater than 99% of the River EV. It's definitely going to outperform this 3.93 fixed one size strategy, and it's likely gonna get closer or maybe even exceed this one small, medium, and big versus all sizes, depending on how many sizes you choose to use. The last thing I wanna to quickly touch on before I talk about tree building and using wizard AI is Bayesian Nash equilibrium. I think the problem in poker is a lot of people swear by solvers in their results and other people just dismiss it completely because it doesn't represent the game that they're currently playing. The truth is they're both sort of right. If you were to somehow model the exact situation you were in, then yes, the solver result would be accurate. The reality is though, it's impossible. For starters, all of our solvers depend on the preflop ranges we give it. Everyone uses different preflop ranges and sizings and each hand is a different stack depth or rake structure. So we can't even get step one right. And then people use different sizings and simplifications post-flop that we'll never actually know since it's a game of incomplete information and people are always improving. All these parameters affect the final output of your sim. So the best we can do is give it a good approximation and then update those beliefs over time if things change. An example I talked about a long time ago was when I first got to 500 zoom, I noticed people started to raise small on pair boards or at 10% on some boards and three red pots and four red pots and 200% C bets blind be blind donks in some lines. I'd never seen that before. I was only seeing the standard 3x-ish raise and 30 to 70% bet sizes. If you're playing in games that you never see those sizes, it's probably okay if you run those sims without them. It's actually going to be more accurate and if you're correct, your EV will go up. But if you're playing someone or you're in a pool where you're unsure what they're doing, it's important that you include as many sizes as you possibly can. Otherwise, your sim will be less accurate. And the nice thing about GTO Wizard AI, since it's so quick, we now have the ability to run sims with all these sizes and it not take hours upon hours. It's also important to mention that our strategy will also affect villain strategy. If we are simplifying in some way, or even if we're using the dynamic feature, maybe we're, we're choosing instead of picking one best dynamic size, we're picking two. All of these things will change villain's strategy in the sim. We have to be careful assuming someone's potentially making a mistake when they could just be looking at a different sim that in reality isn't losing any EV at all. It may not be making the most and exploiting us to the max for our simplification, but again, it, it doesn't mean that they're losing EV overall. Okay, now for the fun part, tree building and using the AI. As of right now, this could change over time. I recommend using one size dynamic flop, one size dynamic turn, and one size dynamic river with at least a small, medium, and big size on each street. We know from the wizard benchmarks, this should allow us to capture most of the EV while still being somewhat playable as a human. As for villain, what I like to do is I like to give them all possible options so I know I'm safe versus anything. And if I'm playing someone who I know is doing something like, for example, range betting or checking flop, or only using specific sizings, then I will edit it. But that's always gonna be my default. Here's an example. So what I've done is I've saved all of these tree templates. Basically what I would do is I would pick the one that I am. Let's say for example, I wanted to do a single race pot in position where I'm the in position PFR. I would uh, click this one. And as you can see, villain in this case would be out of position. I give them fix with all the sizes that I generally see. And then for myself, I have one size dynamic turn again they're fixed all the sizes i'm dynamic with one size and same goes on the river then i could pick the formation that i want so let's say it was big blind versus button single race pot and we can pick a random board so as you can see from the output villain has all the possible sizes that i allowed and then the imposition player which is us in this case has our one size dynamic at least for right now, I think this is the best way to do it, especially over hero and villain dynamic. I know a lot of people run their sims that way because as we stated before, we don't know villain strategy. We're playing a game of incomplete information. If we did dynamic versus dynamic, it might create a strategy that isn't really representing the game we're currently playing. And we know that the, the closer we actually get to representing the game we're playing, the more EV we're likely to gain. I'd rather start with all the sizes and then reduce it over time if I have a high level of confidence, then go the other way. I know this has been a long video, most people probably just wanted to see how I run my trees, but I think it was important to show you the reason why as well. Maybe in the future, I'll make some more training videos or 
potentially videos going more in depth on specific hands if, if that's what you guys want to see. In one way, it kind of sucks that this exists since everyone has access to it and it solves so fast. I spent so much money on a computer with a thread ripper and 256 gigabytes of RAM for running Sims and now it's for nothing. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's it's never been easier and faster to get better if you just put in the time. I'm curious to see how we'll change the game going forward. I bet there will be a lot of new sizes being discovered, even if it doesn't lead to that much EV in theory. I know I've been saying it for such a long time, but I'm really excited to look more at deep stack poker. Honestly, the major barrier is just the Sims took so long to run. It'll be nice to have something that solves fairly quickly and will actually tell me what the best sizes to use actually are. Again, I'm, I'm happy GTO Wizard was the one who partnered with Ruse. If you're one of the few people who haven't signed up already, I actually have a link below where you can get 10% off your first purchase. And lastly, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, good luck at the tables. Thank you.